What's going on guys? So today I want to show you the really cool new addition to the shop. It's the Q Smith Deluxe Q Lathe. Now this thing is really cool. It's way different than a wood lathe and I'm sure a lot of you have never seen one of these. As some of you may have but they're really really interesting and they're really specialized for doing pool cues. So this means later on we'll get to do some really awesome pool cue builds. Uh, but I want to kind of go through the differences in this and a regular wood lathe and show kind of how this thing operates a little bit, some of the things that are really nice about it, as well as we'll just do a quick pull cue build and I'll let you see it in action. So let's jump right into it. The biggest feature you're going to see on this cart is the cart itself. Now, the cart is not actually something that come with the uh, lathe. It is something that uh, I built with the help of a friend. And it's a really nice setup. We did everything on the CNC. And as you can see, you know, there's plenty of storage. Um, these drawers work really well. And then there's also plenty of storage over here that I can use for things like uh, shafts or my molds or the pressure chamber, something I've got to build more of. And that really helps out having plenty of space. And then I also did these wall control um, pegboards, steel pegboards on the end here. And this makes being able to organize things like the bumpers and stuff like that really, really nice. All right, so one of the first things I want to show about the lathe is the headstock. Now, you guys have seen a regular lathe before, and you just chuck things up. What is really nice about this is that it has a pass-through headstock. So you can actually uh, pass material or stock all the way through. As you can see, I can put a piece through the back, and it comes out the front. Now, this is really nice for doing any kind of cue work. You can do joint work or uh, shafts, whatever. Uh, but that's pretty much one great thing about this. That's one big difference here is the pass-through capability of the chuck. Uh, another thing that you'll notice is that I've got some stuff here, like a dial indicator to check runout. So that actually checks to make sure whatever stock I put in the jaws is... Um, running true it's not wobbling up and down and out of center it's really important um, for doing tips and stuff i put on a magnifying glass it's really fun anyway sorry uh <laughs> but that is the headstock the next part i want to go on to is going to be the motor itself as you guys can see it is a just standard electric motor with a brake so as you can see if i turn this on and I unplugged it. Way to go me, huh? Okay, here we go. So if I turn this on, as you can see, the headstock is spinning. And if I pull the brake, it breaks, it stops. And then it can be spun again by setting the brake. And then you can adjust your speed and then turn it back off here. It also is a variable speed motor um, as you can see there so there is the motor and headstock next really big difference is the carriage now most regular wood lathes you're doing it by hand on a rest this has a carriage much like a uh, metal lathe so you can actually control your pretty much your y axis with this and your x axis here and then as you can see, I have a dial indicator. Now, if you guys are curious about like precision and things like that, this dial indicator is a one thousandth of an inch. Every one of these lines is a one thousandth of an inch indicator. And I really do get that technical on the cues. It's really important to be technical and get a really nice, precise cut, especially doing joint, joint work and things like that. Um, as you can see, I've got just a regular tool up here with a shaping um, jig on here. This you can just rotate around like a metal lathe. And that's pretty much the carriage. It's a really simple design, um, and it, it works really well. I mean, as you can see, this I can control my depth of cut. Once you make a cut, you set this to zero. And then from there, you can 
know exactly how many thousandths of an inch you are cutting into the material while doing things like tapering. I have the Deluxe with the tapering jig um, that uses this right here to hold a um, router and then actually place the material onto the lathe and I'm able to do tapering. This is the tapering bar. So as you can see, this is actually protruding further out than this. And what this does is a bearing goes in here, this little bearing right here. This goes inside here and rides along this bar and it actually pushes the carriage out as it goes. As you can see, it's kind of free, free pulling now. And that is because I loosened up this little lever here. Um, but that allows the carriage to back out as it's coming up the length of the shaft or the butt section, whatever. Um, this will do both. This, the bottom bar here is for butt sections. And then up here is the tapering bar. The black is the tapering bar for shafts. And that's really, really nice for doing full pulky builds. The tail stock is also very different than a wood lathe. It moves back and forth like a standard tail stock. But, um, like on my jet, my jet uses a screw knob to push the tail stock forward. This is a good bit different as this is a lever style. So as you can see, the lever pushes the tail stock or the drill chuck forward on the tail stock. And then you can lock it in place. Um, it's also really nice in that if you want to do tapering or anything and don't want to use the tapering bar, as you can see, there's room to move this back and forth. So you are able to set this up to do pretty much whatever you would like to do as far as tapering or drilling and things like that. It's really, really, really handy. This is the power feed motor. This is one of the most useful things I have on here, honestly. Uh, so pretty much the power feed turns on. And as you can see, it is spinning this belt here with this gear. And that, in turn, is spinning this ball screw. So what that does is it actually spins the ball screw on here, and you can actually lock down the carriage. And the carriage itself is now moving by itself. Now, one of the really cool features is that this has the auto shut off. So this is set up to where at a certain point, it will actually shut down the power feed. And I have it set up to shut down the power feed and the spindle or the uh, headstock and everything. So that makes it really nice for doing tapering because you can just pretty much set it and forget it. And it will shut off without running into your headstock while you're doing tapering. So that's pretty much the big differences in this and a wood lathe. Now, this is more akin to a metal lathe than it is a wood lathe, to be honest. Um, but there are features. You can buy things like uh, adapters or uh, tool rests that go on your carriage to where you can do hand tooling on these. Uh, the other part is something you may or may not have noticed is that you don't have a ton of room here to cut massive material about an inch and a half or so is probably about the largest stock you're going to put on here but that's perfect for pull cues because that's a standard pull cue blank it's an inch and a half inch and a quarter um, but as you can see it's really 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 handy machine uh, you can also do full repair and things like that and that's really nice it's a lot of fun i'll be doing videos on some repair work later um, but pretty much now Let's make a quick pull cue and see if this thing works right.
All right, guys, so that is the green cue that I was just working on. Um, as you can see, it's pretty cool looking. I like it. Um, this is one I kind of done just to mainly calibrate the lathe, uh, make sure that everything was working as it should. And as you can see, this is a beautiful cue. I love how it came out. It shoots great. The carbon fiber core in it works amazing. And it's got a really good feel to it. I didn't do any video of me shooting with it um, just because I haven't had time. But it does shoot really nice. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. What colors would you have went with? I kind of like the green, but, you know, I'm a Hulk fan. What can I say? So if you guys like the video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Make sure you turn on notifications. YouTube is not really letting their subs know who is putting up new videos unless you turn on all notifications. So please go do that. Head over to jpainwoodworking.com and join the newsletter. You'll get an email anytime anything new is put up onto the website. And that really shows your support for the channel and helps keep making cool videos and bringing you guys cool projects. I've got some other cool stuff coming down the pipe here really soon. And I hope you like it. So I'm going to get back to work and have a little bit of fun. We'll see you guys on the next one.